The world is changed. I feel it on YouTube. I feel it on Discord. I smell it on Reddit. We thought it dead, but the power of KSP can never die. It began with the fortune of the original. Countless copies were given to players around the world. Simple people enjoying a game they loved. After years, a new game was made. The second version that was given to the early Axis players. Ambitious people who above all else desired new content. But they were all of them deceived. For a fatal flaw was buried deep within the code of these games. And now, deep in the fires of Rocketworks, the Dark Lord Dean Hall forged a master game. And into this game he poured his knowledge, his passion, and his will to dominate all others. One game to rule them all. Welcome, dear friends. Today we'll cover the Kitten Space Agency, a game currently in development by the aforementioned Dean Hall and his Rocketworks studio that aims to replace the Kerbal Space Program. And I'm not talking about replacing KSP2, which is, well, was quite a miserable sight to observe. No, I'm talking full on challenging the original. And honestly, I think they will. Because, like I've said in the intro, Case B does have a fatal flaw, which they promise to address. To be clear, I'm not saying the original Case B is dead. No, long live the king. But our king is a little under the weather, and the longer we play, the more apparent it becomes. Through the years, Case B evolved into a very impressive game. Partly thanks to Squad, partly thanks to hundreds of modders who turned the game from this to this. Over the years, we've come from simple rockets jumping into the nearby ocean to fascinating missions towards distant planets. Now we have all the parts that we want to visit any planet we could imagine, all with good visuals. But one thing stays the same. The part count. Now, technically it's not really limited, but anyone who tried to make a craft with more than a couple hundred parts felt that silent horror as your rocket starts to wobble like crazy and then blows up before even getting from the launch pad. And don't even get me started on YouTubers with their thousands of parts that can only be run in frames per minute. So it definitely is a problem, and while the performance did improve over the years, the acceptable part count never really got to more than a couple hundred, and truth be told, most of that just comes from better hardware. But why is it that KSP's graphics improved so much over the years, whereas the physics engine is completely stuck? And the answer is Unity, or rather PhysX, which is the physics engine responsible for all the heavy lifting in KSP. Now, PhysX is a pretty good physics engine, but it's rather old. And being old, it was first developed for CPUs that didn't have many cores, so it was single-threaded. Later, it was expanded to run on multiple threads, but even then, it doesn't really scale well. Most modern laptops have around 12 cores, but PhysX can only scale up to 6. To be clear, that is fine for most cases, but it's really not perfect for KSP specifically, because any build your something out of parts game will have, by definition, lots of parts, all of them requiring complex simulation and interaction, which makes the game very reliant on the performance of its physics engine. So an obvious step to improve performance would be to use a more specialized solution, like the JOLT physics engine, which can scale well past 4 threads, and can reach maximum performance at about 15 to 20 cores, depending on the simulation size, which is probably close to your system limit anyway. This by itself could give us double the part count compared to PhysX, and I wasn't able to verify this for sure, but it seems like KSP's PhysX is running in just a single thread, if true, then we could reasonably expect 5 to 6 times more parts before the simulation becomes unstable. But there's another trick that you can do. Let's say we have a space station in orbit and another spaceship nearby. Even though we need to have a physics simulation for both of them, they don't interact with each other. 
This means that we can have two instances of our physics engine, each processing its respective craft. And if our physics engine can handle, say, 1000 parts, then we can have 2000 parts in view at the same frame rate. And this can be huge for, say, docking procedures, which is where frames per second is needed most. And this could be a huge game changer for bases on the ground, as you could split your base into several vessels and connect them with cables that would allow transferring resources, but wouldn't take part in the physics simulation, effectively splitting the base into multiple crafts for the physics engine. This would make the entire array act as one base, whereas each part of it will be in its own physics bubble. And devs from KSA have already shown us that they do have the technical ability to do so, which is part of the reason why they decided to use JOLT, as it's the only off-the-shelf physics engine with this ability. And last but not least is physics simplification. Let's say we have a huge colony ship, and it's going to another planet. Such adventures require a lot of delta V, and thus we need to use highly efficient engines. But high efficiency does come at the cost of low thrust, so the acceleration can take hours or even days. During this time we have to simulate physics, but because the acceleration is so low we can actually simplify the physics model. For example, we can weld together parts that are rigidly connected, we can simplify the collision models for our parts, and we can even reduce the accuracy just a tiny bit. All of these changes would drastically reduce the load on the physics engine, allowing us to speed up time by a lot, meaning that we won't have to waste hours. All of these changes were simply not possible within the original KSP, and KSP2 mostly failed because they focused too much on graphics instead of focusing on the core of the game. Rocketworks learn from these mistakes, which is also why I can't really show you much about KSA right now. All of the work being done is about building a strong and stable foundation, working out the physics model, and only then, once it's complete, will they start building graphics and game design and whatnot. Honestly, I think this is a very good strategy, and I really think they might become the spiritual successor to KSP. For real this time. But until then, I'll keep making more KSP content for you. Speaking of, YouTube thinks you might want to watch this video next.